Hello guys, welcome back to the bench. And today we are going to be testing the Badger 105. Um, I also know this is known as the Patriot, but I haven't seen it uh, listed as the Patriot in a little while. So maybe they're just going by the model number as 105. Uh, these were missing in action. It took me a while to get one for a little while. Uh, maybe during the pandemic they were having trouble getting them out. The company is from uh, Illinois. They're in America. Franklin Park, Illinois. And um, which was odd, but that I was still having trouble getting one. But they finally started showing up. But I think it was a good thing that I waited because they changed something slightly on the brush. The reason why I'm checking this is because I have three friends who all use this brush. I ask what they use, and they say the 105, and a couple of them use multiple, uh, multiple Badger airbrushes. I told them I'd been using my. Uh, PSI 270, and um, also my other trigger airbrush from uh, GSI Creos. And I, I swear by this thing. And um, the Japanese quality is just unsurpassed. I, I love it. And um, But these guys have been using this for years. And the guys who use these really do like them. I just want to try it. I know they have a nice big nozzle and a wide and a really strong pattern laying down a lot of paint at once. And that's something I've been looking to do to prime a lot of models. I might do a lot of priming at once to have models sit and then they're ready to go when I go to put my paint. However, let's show you what we got here. Here's the brush. I'm trying to get it so the camera can show it up for you nice. Came with this cover. Now you'll always see pictures of it like this, I guess, to show the cutout. And uh, when you clean the brush, you can fill it up. And pull it back and it just it flashes a lot of um, thinner whatever you're using to clean it out with flushes it through and cleans it out really well I switch it to here because my finger tends to drag on this piece when it's this way see it and it runs my my finger and I, I always think I'm holding it back so I end up flipping it this way you know no big deal either way whatever is good for you now it comes with a plastic top I usually don't use the lids, but um, my buddies have both the metal tops and the plastic tops. There's a metal top that comes with most of the other airbrushes. And um, they say this actually works better. It actually uh, seals it in nicer. And um, the metal top, sometimes it's really hard to flick off. And he says sometimes it actually creeps through. This one, they never had a problem. I don't use the cover that often, so not a big deal for me. However, you guys have got to be careful of this. The needle isn't protected. Has no protective cap like the GSI or all my other ones actually. See this little cap? It's like not having this end cap where you get the needle exposed. Yeah. It's the same thing as that. Uh, some guys do remove the needle protector when they paint because they do like to get close. Oops. Destruction. They do like to get close. And that is a way of getting close. The, uh, and um, sometimes when you get close with a cap, the air gets trapped inside and it messes up with the aligning. Where when you remove the cap, you can get in close and the air doesn't get trapped. It kind of just gets out of its own way, so to speak. But I had to show you guys this. It does not come with a protective cap. My friend says he thinks he has one and he thinks they make one. So I'm going to look into the, I'm going to look into if I, if I can actually find one. But for now, you guys, you've got to be careful, particularly when you put it in your hanger. If you're going to put it away all the time, put this cap. We're also going to use this cap for cleaning it because normally you can cover up the front easier with the cap than not. You don't want to poke your hand at the very least. But we'll pop that on, and then we'll do the back flush when we go to clean it. The cup doesn't come off, but they told me it's really easy to clean. And um, you don't have to take it apart very often. They said if you clean it right, my buddies, and it even says it in the book, if you clean it often, properly, at the end of all your sessions, you won't have to open, take this thing apart for a very long time. I'd like to take mine apart every few months, you know, quarterly, maybe throughout the year, and uh, go through it a little bit. But they're right. If you have a clean, mostly the needle is what ends up getting dirty, maybe a little bit in the chamber here. And that, for that, I end up using my little dental cleaners. But uh, it has three needle sizes. This one came with, I think, I believe the middle one. This is a 0.5 millimeter. 
I guess the color will tell us that. I They didn't have the other needles. I'm trying to find them. There's a finer one. I'm guessing if this is a 5, then the other one's going to be a 0 0.3. And the other one might be closer to a 0 0.7. Uh, I can't imagine pushing more paint. You'll see in the test that this pushes out a lot of paint. All right, now you have no stopper in the back. By that I mean on my GSI, you can adjust where, you, where your needle doesn't go all the way back. And then you can pull it all the way back. Almost stop it completely so you can set up a line. But I don't use it too often. I usually leave it all the way open anyway. You're going to use your own finger anyway to determine how far back you're going. So there's no stopper there. Uh, keep in mind the airbrush was under 80 bucks. Uh, this one was about 120 so th there is a price difference. Um, now it has its own size fitting here for the hose. This doesn't fit your standard hose, which is here. It just doesn't fit. So I ended up buying this. I'll put the link below. It was cheap. Might have been 10 bucks with shipping. It's a fitting. Here's what's confusing to a lot of people. It always says Iwata. Iwata hose. It's a standard hose. All airbrushes have it. Let me show you mine. I'll lean over. This came with the MyTuti air compressor, air compressor, and uh, it's this, it's it's a standard hose. I don't know why. Most of the fittings I looked up said Iwata hose. This is your standard hose. Is it one eighth? Is that what it is, guys? One quarter? I think it's one quarter. And that's it. So I mean, uh, it just came with this one piece. And from here, it's got a fitting. It's got a rubber fitting inside. It just fits on perfect. You can feel the fitting tightening right there. And now you're ready to go. For me, I use a quick release. Here's one of my quick release hubs here. So we'll put that on. I can feel it sinking in there. There we go. Now we're ready to go. Nice gripper, too. You can hold on to it well there. Um, and that's it. I'm not going to tear it down. We're just going to check its performance, and we're going to clean it. And... Um, I'm pretty impressed with the performance, meaning it lays down a nice layer quickly. The setback is you can actually watch the paint. If you pull this baby all the way back, you can actually watch the paint just go right through the cup, <laughs> which is sad. But if you got a you know a big bottle of paint, it won't matter if you're doing a whole model, even if you're going to use a, one of your tester bottles and you just want to paint a car, you know you're going to go through a bottle anyway. Um, but I noticed it did go through. Not as a little subtle if you don't pull back quite a bit. But I found the best performance was to really lay the paint down. Now, let me show you the rest of the book. It's just precautions in different languages. And this is your parts list. Here is the updated piece. Now, I have a friend and someone wrote to me that they had leakage in the front here with a fitting. That is where they put the new part in. Manufacturer's note. Your Pro Production Series now features a newly designed field changeable adjustable inner seal screw assembly. The part number is here, which is the inner seal, and they give you the part numbers. And I matched it up on there. It turns out to be right here. So it is that part where he said it was leaking. And um, there it is. It's like a new Teflon seal. And this assembly is in here. I, I, I pulled it apart to check it, and that is it. So I'm wondering, see, so turn the screw to tighten the seal counterclockwise. So anyway, this is the note, and it says they stuck this sticker. So you can tell this is the old Patriot. This is it. I'll show you. It doesn't refer to the Patriot here. It just says 105. So I know this is the old manual. They just didn't reprint them. But they did put this sticker. Manufacturers don't see it. They, they stuck it over this other one. And it says, see manufacturer's note, and this is the shiny card that was wrapped in here. And that's where it says they changed the fitting. For the better, I imagine. My test so far showed no leakage up front where this is. So maybe that's for the better. And uh, maybe that's why they removed the Patriot name, because it's a slightly different brush, I guess. Anyway, I'm impressed. I am impressed with the brush for the few tests that I did. What we're going to do is we're going to go through some stuff. We'll do some primers. We're not going to thin them, I don't think, because I want to see how it pushes th the paint through. This is probably great for thick acrylics, because I, I, I can't imagine uh, having a problem anymore with thick acrylics. This is probably made for Vallejos. You know, we'll put some Vallejo in here, and we'll try a couple of lacquers. I'm going to try this uh, 
AK third gen. We're going to go straight out of the bottle. I want to try a lot of stuff straight out of the bottle. But we're going to try a lacquer, an acrylic, a primer. And uh, we'll try it on different surfaces, a couple of spoons. And I think we're going to take the black primer. I'm going to show you guys. We're going to do this old car body I have here. We're going to go over it and show you. I'm going to show you how quickly and how nicely it covers um, the plastic of the models. All right, guys. Let me prep up some of this paint. I'll meet you at the booth. And wait till you see this baby work. You're going to be impressed. Hey guys, I'm at the booth and I'm prepping my pieces to paint. And I want to show you guys something that I didn't mention at the bench. I am going to show you the air pressure. Look at that. Let me see if I can zoom in. It's 15 PSI. 10 to 15 is what it recommends. And uh, I'm impressed because that is all it needs. Any more than that, you'd probably be really really unloading the paint anyway i wanted to show you that before i got set up at the booth to show you guys how impressive that is it works on such a slow i mean such a low air pressure and uh you'll see it now in the performance so let me grab some paint and i'll show you guys all right guys gonna talk a little louder now we are uh, at the booth with our dual fans going we're gonna put some game air i put it straight in no thinning obviously and uh, we're at, what am I at? Like 14 or 15 PSI. Do not pull this baby back. All right? Watch this. And this is 15 PSI, which tells me this will work very well with um, canned air. You know, the, uh, the accelerant in the cans? Because those don't push out, you know, a lot of pressure. You know, we're done. It's covered. That's how much air it pushes out. Um, let's see if we can get a fine line. I don't know if we can. Let's try it. That's not bad. Come on. I mean, it's a really big needle, guys. So, I mean... I can't go. Yeah, it can't be done. It's not bad. There's a lot of air coming through because even with a low air pressure, it is a big needle and nozzle. It just is, you know. But talk about covering quickly. This will do it. Just so you guys can see how far back. All right, you're gonna go through paint. I think it's just one setback, but if you keep your hand controlled, I didn't pull it back a lot for the spoon. But um, I really do like this airbrush because it's accomplishing something I've always wanted to do, um, and that is a lot of paint, like a, a spray can, but not at that heaviness of a spray can. So uh, let me clean this up. We'll move on to another paint, and I'll show you what else this can do. All right, guys, we're going to try some AK 3rd Gen. This came out really blobby thick, so I put a few drops of their thinner in it. Not much. And I just put it right in the cup and put that black cap on it and back flushed it. So let's see if that has done anything. No, well, not too bad. Seems like it's struggling still, but let's try it. This stuff dries really nice, too. Eh, there you go. It's on. It looks orange peely, but trust me, when it dries, it dries nice. But, those are my standard acrylics. Let's move on to maybe a, a primer, and then we'll move on to a lacquer. All right, guys. We're going to go in with some black primer from All Clad. Straight out of the bottle, shaken. Put it in the cap. I put the cap on because it's. I put a lot in because this is going to use a lot of primer. Now we just take this Chrysler Imperial and show you what we got.
keep in mind guys this is like 13 or 14 psi I'm doing my best not to pull the needle all the way back. But I think if you didn't mind going through a boatload of paint, um, you could just pull that baby back and do it in probably two coats. You know? I'm going to let this dry for about five minutes, hit it with its second coat. I'll do it off the camera and I'll show you the results at the end. But uh, you get the idea here. Yeah. Um, so let me uh, let this dry. I'll put another coat and we'll come back with a another test and I'll be right back all right guys from one uh, black primer to another let's go with Stana Res. this is their newer gloss black primer we'll just put this on a spoon and see what we get straight out of the bottle no thinning one of my favorite primers um, that I use but this is the first time trying the new gloss black it was hard to get for some reason anyway let's see what we got Same air pressure, 15. Oh, it covers nice. We are done. Look at that. It looks like glass. Now that's a gloss black base. Now because I can use gloss black bases for everything, let's do it again. So you get that initial blast right on there, and it seems like you can just go in and get the job done in, in two coats. I love it when they're, they're thinned perfectly out of the bottle. You know, no waste at all. Look at this. All this with 15 PSI. I can really crank out my gloss black spoons here for my uh, metal test. Might as well keep going. Let's do one more. I should have did the car in this, and I could have did a nice gloss, uh, chrome the whole car in some all clad. <laughs> anyway, I'm going crazy here with these spoons. Let me uh, move on to uh, maybe a lacquer or one other color, and then we'll show you how it cleans up, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, guys, next up, let's try some Tamiya Light Green X15. Thinned it with some lacquer. Let's see what we got. Let's try one of these pieces. Eesh, that's a color, huh, guys? Wow, that is a color. Is that puke green? All right, let's see. Let's try it on a piece like this. It's getting all the cracks. I don't want to blast it. We want to come in a little easy. The more layers I get, the, the two of the green I'm going to get to match the cover, so to speak, of the jar it comes in. Beautiful. Look at that. Awesome. That's without primer. I usually like to have a white primer when I put something down like this, but... Uh, uh, for the test just to show you guys how the brush works and uh, it does work really well um, all right I might do one more on camera I might not but uh, I'm gonna wrap this up I want to show you how I clean this out so uh, I'll do that now all right guys here at the bench uh, blow out anything you have I usually do it at the both you know this is my uh, cleaner jar and that's what we're left with here so I like to use uh, I use lacquer thinner 
in acetone when I clean out my um, my Tamiya so I squirt some in there now I like to get these uh, these long um, cotton swabs see it? and I like to go around the edge it takes everything off the edge all right now um, I don't like to uh, flush all this through so under my bench I keep my barrel with my uh, wrapped paper towels and rags in it and sometimes I use cat litter there it is the first blast already so we're gonna go back in we're gonna put some more thinner in it all right here we are we're gonna clear it out in here in my little jar you can see it blowing in there's some yellow already coming out now what you like to do is I do like to while I'm painting multiple colors I get these cheap brushes from uh, uh, Hobby Lobby or Michaels in my area and I just like to brush off the tip see this it, cle it cleans the tip right off hard to see there for you guys see it? nice and clean and then you can take your cap or you can cover it with your uh, with your napkin but you're gonna you know paper towel but you're gonna have to cover the top too because it blows us right off like a nerf rocket so hold this on anyway I'm holding it on and I'm just gonna cover it so it doesn't splash hear it and now I'm flushing through all the bad stuff now dump that out because you don't want to flush the bad stuff back in the front should be clean because nothing came through and that's it I wipe the cup clean wipe the outside try not to hit the needle it is exposed you guys got to be careful about that and then what I like to do is either acetone or another shot of quick shot of thinner into uh, the, the paper towel that I'm working with and if you can shoot it you can see it's coming out clear that's how you can tell you're ready to go you don't even have to blast all that stuff through you want to get the rest of it out you can throw it in here and that's it you're ready to go you let some air run through it it'll dry it out pretty quick and look how clean we are that's it. and that's it all right um, I spray the bunch so uh, I think we'll go back to the bench and we'll go over the results all right guys here we are we are going to wrap this up on this awesome uh, mid-tier airbrush uh, results I think are great now we started off with the game air and look at this how beautiful and smooth it covered the spoon in what 10 seconds all right then I did this acrylic this one had to be thinned a little bit with the, the company's own thinner AK thinner I told you it looked like you know sandpaper when I was done it looked like orange peel but uh, check it out now I told you the stuff dries really nice it here is really good I haven't done a full test on these yet that's coming up but look at that isn't that great all right off camera I did this SMS acrylic lacquers this covered I even think it covered faster than them this was almost like one coat it went on one coat and this stuff this is mega durable this stuff again another test is a full test of these are coming up very soon what is this midnight blue yep all right the Tamiya uh, what was this light green XF 15 we painted it on this piece with the lines in it here's where the clip was nice and even and here's the uh, Gundam piece like a leg looks like look at this it was molded in the color look at that I left this sprue on just so I could hold it onto the clip I normally wouldn't do that isn't that awesome all right and then we did the primer right we did the primer of this car this Imperial I think it's an Imperial uh, black primer micro filler from uh, all clad straight out of the bottle it looked all whitish and rough you know when I put it to the uh, dehydrator and look at it now it's <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> it this stuff just just fantastic you know look at that it took two cupfuls but I was done doing this whole kit and uh, it had to be about four minutes I primed the whole thing and this is just a much finer nicer primer than you would get out of most spray cans and even though I filled up the cup twice well I don't fill it up it's like half half and half 
Look at the size of this, and this is under 10 bucks. So you're getting your money's worth on this primer for sure. How great is that? You can really see how bad the molds are with the uh, AMT kits. You can see all the flaws. Oh, it makes the kit look good, doesn't it? That was that. And this is the latest from Stunares. This is Badger. I wanted to test the Badger product. And um, I have these and I have their other paints. Let me see. Hold on a second. Yeah, I got these also from them. They make all acrylics. This is their Freak Flex. This is their, uh, I guess this is their Monster, their Warhammer lineup. And uh, these went on nice too. I've been, I was testing them. But they're so hard to find little in stock that I don't want to test them and have you guys go nuts looking for them. That's why I, uh, I'm holding off until I get a better supply. These I can get anywhere. This is their new gloss black. Black gloss. And um, I was looking for more glass blo bla gloss black because I do so much of the chrome testing. You guys know that. A lot of chrome tests and a lot of the metalizers which need a black base, particularly a gloss one. And uh, when I saw they had a big bottle of this at around 12 bucks, I said, I gotta try it. And uh, there it is. Look at this, guys. Look at this. This is straight out of the bottle into the cup. And how many spoons did I spray? Uh, one, two, three, four. I can see five from here. So I sprayed a bunch with that little cup that I put in, a little bit that I put in the cup. Look at the results. So it atomizes the, air, uh, the paint beautifully. And this is what I did off camera. This is a uh, Model Master Pearl Grape. Look at that. And this is thin, like I did in my other video with testers. I thinned it with lacquer thinner, 50 50. And again, it just dried beautifully. So there you go. Um, this is how it came. I took the I took the fittings off. I'm going to put in the the description if you want the airbrush. You need this fitting if you're going to use your standard hose. If you guys have a badger hose, I guess you don't need it. I took this off just to show you guys uh, how it comes. But this turns it into a normal size. I call it normal because most airbrushes have this fitting. Shame on uh, Badger for doing that. But so guys like um, like having their own uh, sizes and fittings, you know. Uh, hold on. And there's the cap. It comes shipped with that. Be careful with the needle. I'm going to recap that again. There's your needle. See it sticking out? So you want to be careful with that. Now it dragged a little bit when I got it. A little, I, you know, I felt a little draggy. It's not the highest quality. This isn't this isn't the quality of my Japanese one for sure. But Badger, I've had this for about a year. Badger sells this uh, red dab, which is Badger spelled backwards, needle juice. Say that, what is it, five times, six times? Uh, Beetle juice three times. Uh, airbrush lubricant. So you take a... Uh, toothpick and I just dabbed some in here and wherever the wherever there was moving parts and now it's it don't even make the metal sound anymore it's making a draggy metal sound when I got it now it doesn't now the other good thing about this exposed design is I can clean the needle without having to pull everything out so you just loosen your nut here it's got a nice hole handle here and there you go there's your needle and I think the other needles are color coded or they have a notch that matches see the notch so I'm not sure which system they use. I'm going to order some more needles and some nozzles and to see um, the different results. Um, what else I want to tell you guys? Oh, when you pull the needle out, make sure you're not going to... This is going to come flying out. You're going to have to reassemble this. You know, I've already practiced it, and it's not that hard. But you got to get your tweezers, and you got to get your glasses on and get these little pieces put back in, just like my other one. It's no different. So you're going to match this into here. Keep the needle pushed down a little bit. I mean, the trigger, and that's it. Push it as far as she goes. You know, tighten it here. You're ready to go. Uh, again, you're gonna have to be careful with the front. I'll look into if there's a protective cap. Um, if there isn't, then you guys just have to be careful. You know, and when you put it away, put it away like this. I mentioned I like it like this, so it doesn't drag my finger. And um, and that's it. Um, I really like the airbrush. I think it was only 70 bucks. Again, my other one's about a buck 20, a buck 30. So you get a 30, 60. You know, I mean, it's $60 difference, which is a lot. You can almost buy two of these, you know, if you think about it. And um, But you will need this if you have uh, the hose that I use. I'll put a link uh, for Spray Gunner for this, and I'll put a link for Amazon. Amazon has two of them. They have this one, 
by itself and they have it with its hose and a couple other a jar some other things thrown in but maybe if you guys want the hose it's probably made for them that hose that it comes with but uh, I have all my hoses here so I've, it was worth it for me just to buy this you know I got this came from Amazon by the way so I will put the link up for everything I'll even put the link up for the for the lubricant and um, I'll try to put a link up for most of the paints that I use particularly the Stano Res um, look how great that is I mean that is wonderful oh my god that's great but uh, that's it guys that was a test I really like the airbrush you're not gonna do any fine details you're gonna be spraying you know wide patterns but it's gonna come out smooth and perfect every time um, I, I ran tests across the board all week like this and I had zero troubles zero troubles um, lengthwise I mean I should say uh, how long is it gonna last who knows I just got the thing um, I'll test it again again in a year as far as uh, I'll go over it, how it's lasted. If it breaks sooner than that, I will, of course, let you guys know. But if you take care of it and clean it like I showed you, um, you probably you shouldn't have a problem for quite a bit. I use these just so you guys know. I got these dental things from uh, Walmart. Can you see them? And uh, when you pull the needle out and you do a thorough cleaning, you go in here with this, and it fits right into the hole either side, and it pulls out a lot of stuff that sticks to the dental. So um, these things are awesome. They're uh, gums or gum. With yeah, something like that. So I get those at Walmart, and they come in handy. Really, really come in handy. And uh, anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, I got a lot of more tests coming up. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do the sharpen air test. That's going to sharpen the needles. I got a couple of needles that need sharpening, so I've been waiting to get this. We're going to test this to keep our needles uh, fit and trim, we'll call it. Um, I, I'm trying to get this out of the way so I can show you. I'm going to be doing a test of empty paint markers. Here's uh, Molotov's, right? And uh, what brand is this? i got two brands here of markers. And uh, you fill them up. We unscrew it and put our own paint in it. they got they got the bearing shakers in them. i got all different sizes. And so this test is going to be coming up. See it? Paint marker. We're going to make our own paint markers. So I, I hope this works. That's why... Um, I'm going to try the test, and I think it's going to have to be acrylic paints, but we have plenty of paint to test, that's for sure. And that's all. i got a few other things to go over. We're going to do our gauzy shine enhancer. I just got that in, and pretty soon, maybe the next test, I, I got these decals driving with this Walther Salva set, and the, so far, good stuff. Real good stuff. So, And these just came in, my Tamiya engraving blades. So we'll be doing a test on those too, because I'm going to be doing a test on some uh, panel lining liquids that are not made by Tamiya. See, so I got this uh, shade known oil from uh, Citadel. I got Game Ink from Vallejo. I got this wash from Vallejo. So we're going to try all different kinds of panel linings that are not made by Tamiya. So anyway, that's the test, guys. Please like the video. It helps a lot. Uh, you don't know how much it helps it really does so please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already we have a boatload of more tests to go and we will see you in the next video